so we can start. Okay. Hello together for the last slide uh, and last talks this day. Today, I hope uh, you enjoy the last talk of the summit as well as we do. Um, my name is Christian Rinker. This is uh, Yannick Remet. We are from Evola, and we're talking today about providing service access with service keys using HA proxy and floating IPs. And like Julian, we uh, wanted a full slot, got 10 minutes, a lightning talk, so we uh, decided to let the floating IPs part out of it because it's not the main reason we want to talk, we want to talk about. So um, what problem do we want to address? Um, if you uh, looked at about the Open Service Broker API um, talk of Alex and Matt uh, today, you, you get to know how, to, um, how service brokers um, are uh, enabling the uh, Cloud Foundry ecosystem to use data services um, out of uh, some point, um, but do not care about where it is deployed or where it's running. Um, how to you only uh, get to know how to use it. What it is doing is if you have your user and you're accessing your cloud, um, uh, your service, uh, you're going to the cloud controller using the CF CLI and saying, hey, I have new, want a new service and I want to bind an application to it and uh, with a CF um, bind service command and then the service broker is called by the cloud controller, gets some uh, access to your service which is deployed. I don't know, I don't care um, in case of the Cloud Foundry, and then sends credentials to your application. Um, but in some cases, you come to the trouble problem that you have to access that service directly, maybe for troubleshooting a database or something. And then how to get that? Because you don't know where uh, is that service um, this, uh, deployed to and how to access. So there is in the Open Service Broker API that trick called um, service key. You can, uh, instead of create service binding, you can say create a service key, which means that the cloud controller goes to the service broker, asks for credentials, but instead pushing that to you, the application, it pushes to you. And there are some problems with it, which uh, will Yannick talk about. So um, it may be that your service instance is only deployed in a private network, and you can't access it with the, with the service key. Um, and then you can to come to the great idea to give your um, service instance a public IP, but the next day your CTO calls and doesn't agree with your great idea, and um, you have to go back to this. And again, you're thinking about a, um, a way to uh, get connection to your service instance from, from the outside and you can um, SSH into an um, um, C, uh, CFSSH into an application instance and um, go on from there, or could deploy um, jump hosts. But it's all a big hassle, and nothing seems to really be a good way to connect to this database. So we came up with this, which is basically um, we gave our service broker and remote control to an HA proxy config. So now if you create a um, service key, in addition to creating a new user and um, password on the service instance, we also talk to our HA proxy backend. Um, we provide this HA proxy backend with the um, internal IP of the service instance and um, the part which is service instance um, is running. Um, and this backend pushes um, a new message into a RabbitMQ and um, a an, an Python program called um, the HA proxy agent gets this message, updates the HA proxy config, and after that you um, get, get back the um, public IP of this HA proxy and the part that is binded to your service instance. And now you have a um, public available uh, service instance without the service instance being accessible directly. And after you delete the service um, key, yeah, the, um, the accessibility is also gone. One interesting thing with this also is that it's because it's an HA proxy, it only has one public IP for many services maybe, and you have the, uh, also the possibility to use um, access control lists to uh, 
manage who's able to access it, so maybe only you can access this with your personal computer because the IP address of your personal computer is the only one who can access it. It's also something you can do up uh, within uh, intranet instead of an internet thing, so no other user in your intranet is able to access your database service or something and such. Um, also, what you can do is with the setup is think about not um, managing one HA proxy, but a cluster of HA proxies, for example, or um, you can make some uh, distribution calls, like um, you have groups of HA proxies, and you can manage it. Um, there are the several HA proxies with the same setup, because we have some kind of um, agent management uh, thing about there. And what you can also do is uh, use this setup for uh, several service brokers at the same time, so you have one managing system for the HA proxies, which can be called by several service brokers at the same time, so you have the uh, possibility to uh, come across um, that uh, central infrastructure point for several services. And you uh, save public IP addresses, because in that old setup, you had to uh, make public IP addresses up for every service instance maybe several, for one service instance, several IP addresses. In this setup, you can share the HA proxy IP addresses because you can use port uh, forwarding there. Uh, can, you're managing ports instead of IP addresses. And you can do HA setups in front of to manage load balancing things um, in the access from, out, from the outside. Um, and the cool thing is, it's all open source. Uh, you can access it, you can look into it. We are happy for your contributions, your inputs, your ideas, and um, help, uh, we're, we're happy to hear about it from you. And that's the thing. I hope you had a fun uh, CF Summit. Um, we had it, and uh, maybe see you next year on the CF Summit in uh, Boston. Travel safe.